Hi everyone, welcome back to Zelda Echoes of Wisdom 100% walkthrough with me, Austin John, part three. Once again, quick shout out, brand new merch. This is going to be the hooded tee inspired by Echoes of Wisdom with engraved tri rod on the arm. Pretty cool stuff. AustinJohnPlays.com slash merch. Let's get into the walkthrough. Previously, we got ourselves four pieces of heart, one accessory, and five mite crystals from clearing the rift that we just did. And where you're actually left off, you actually can't leave here yet. You have to follow the minister until you go to the place that she is. Look, she's just right in front of us. Also, did a little bit more discovering and I found that there's an additional two accessories that uh, I missed in my first math of all the accessories in the game. So if you heard me in the first episode say 26, it's actually a total of 30 accessories that occupy 28 slots at the end of the game. So we're going to be gathering all 30 accessories. Hello sir, pardon us, but my name is Left. Lady Impa is my colleague and was that? I'm a very busy man, no time for chatter, now get. I apologize for the unannounced visit, but please, we'll only be a moment. No, 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 I'm about to leave, come back later. Did you just hear us out? I, I said no, I gotta go save Link. Shout out to this guy, real priorities, man. Hang on, you have Link's cloak, why do you have Link's cloak? What? Okay, tell me everything, tell me about the rifts and anything you know about the swordsman. Hmm, I understand the situation now, thanks for the explanation, princess. Oh, so he knew that we were the princess. All right, this thing has been bugging me ever since you barged in here. What is this floaty thing? You can see me too? That's strange. Zelda has always been able to, but now both of you can as well. You're telling me we're the only ones that could see you? That's odd. What do you and I have in common? We both ended up in rifts and lived to tell the tale. It seems the rifts change people somehow. Ah, so only people who have been in rifts can actually see try. Okay. Uh, I guess I should introduce myself. The name's Luberry. I'm Impa's older brother. Impa's pretty old already, but okay. If the swordsman who saved you is Link, I made his weapon the Sword of Might. Mr. Luberry, why did you make him a sword? Because the Master Sword doesn't exist yet in this lore. <laughs> That's why. So Link was helping with the rifts too? Plenty of monsters come out of rifts, but the blue one was particularly powerful. You know, the Ganon at the beginning? That may or may not have actually been Ganon. I got a hunch that if we take him out, it'll fix the whole people disappearing business. Princess, you shared that Link managed to take the blue guy out, and yet the rifts keep coming. Clearly we're missing something. The rift in the forest is gone, but Link's not back. What we need is more information. My friends had mentioned something about oversized rifts in other areas. We might end up finding the king and other missing people in far off rifts. I'm gonna fly up and look for some of the other big rifts. Okay, go for it. He doesn't really fly, he just kind of floats. Oh, and he's back. I think I found some. There's no saying where Zelda's father and the others might be, but I did spot some big rifts we can go explore. We have one at the top right and the bottom left in the map. If we fix the rifts, we might be able to save your father and the others, so let's get to work. I almost forgot the sword you got there. Pretty sure I can make it even more powerful than it is. I'll have to do some more research on it though, so talk to me later if you're interested. Okay, I'm immediately interested. You want to chat about the sword? As I mentioned before, the Sword of Might is my craftsmanship. For a while now, I've been researching a type of crystal that's somewhere left behind in the rifts. In my research, I discovered that it's highly effective against rift monsters. Okay, so long story short, he's going to be telling you that all of the might crystals that you gather, you can go ahead and put them in this machine over here, and that's going to be used to upgrade your sword. This is what the 150 crystals are used for throughout the entire game. Well, technically, I think it's 125, and the last 25 are used for something else. But we're going to be gathering all of them, and the first thing I'm going to upgrade is my energy, because it is not big. The energy gauge is now level 2. Yeah, look at that, 25% increase. Okay, we need more than 10 crystals for each of the additional things, so let's get on with it. Anything in this basement? Uh, we have bombs, and bows and arrows, and swords. So, so guess, guess what you're gonna be getting in the future. <laughs> okay, we have a couple orders of business that we need to attend to. The very first thing is, my notes say, get fairy, get spider. So over here is Lake Hylia. That's gonna be our first destination because inside of the middle of the lake is gonna be the Great Fairy. I don't remember exactly where, but I know we're gonna be coming across where the spider is. And the spider is the best the best thing in the entire game. Uh, we're also gonna be unlocking a bunch of fast travel points and covering some ground here on our way into Gerudo, because Gerudo is long. For you to do all of Gerudo is probably about three hours. So we've, oh, there's spider. Spiders don't like fire, ow. This bad boy is the Crawlchilla. The Crawlchilla is the best echo in the entire game. And as soon as you get it, you can literally explore this entire map if you want to. 
by using the uh, the follow feature. So anytime that there's a cliff that's too big for you, you just go ahead, spawn him, Z target, follow, and then you just go up it. The only time it becomes difficult is if there's like a very thin fence at the top. Oh, he also found something. He found a baddie. Oh, he can't go in water. That's a thing. Also, something that's going to be very helpful for exploring out of the world is the Carmadillo. Spawn, follow. It's a pretty fast way for you to get around at the beginning of the game. Which brings us to our first piece of heart right over here. Oh! And it's us getting forced into our first side quest. While this dark nut is doing this, oh, and he fell to his death. Cool. I'm gonna go ahead and put down an old bed because we saw a spider can't go in water. And we're gonna follow the spider up the water spout. And that gets us a piece of heart. And before we head over there, let's just go ahead and clear out the rest of the southern prairie. Inside of this body of water is going to be a mite crystal that we need. And on top of this cliff here is a mite crystal. And I think there's a side quest right there as well. Oh, but we should probably, you know, do the side quest that we're in the middle of doing up a wall. Spider, can you can you kill the baddies? Uh, something nice though, you actually don't need to go up there. As soon as you defeat the enemies, you just get teleported up there, which is very helpful. Wow, thanks for saving the day. You're not Link, but that hood, I thought you were Link. Sorry for the confusion. I drop grass in my village. You should never get too absorbed in your work. That's a good, good thing to know, even though that's literally what I do. Cool, 20 rupees. Thanks so much, guy. And that's up a wall complete. And if you look down in the middle of the water, if we dive down and then we go spin down here, that's going to be a wild mic crystal. There's a lot of them. Sometimes you find just one out in the wild like this. By the way, I don't think I actually ever got the Octorok, so we need to go get that. Go murder, please. Thank you. And that's Octorok. I want to see if this side quest is over here. A guy needs to help us move boxes. Oh, yep, he's over here. A shortcut to the ranch is blocked off. Okay, well, you can very easily help him with that. All you have to do is Z target the box at the top left and then we just move it out of the way and this rock move that out of the way and then speak with them again and with the road cleared out i won't have to break my back climbing over that stuff you cleared things up for me well thanks that's a big help here's something for your trouble 20 rupees and our last destination is just a little bit below this it's going to be on this little piece of i'm just going to call it mesa over here just head up the wall with spider head down here Oh, and we get the best echo in the entire game! Crow. Crow is the best echo in the entire game. Don't know if you know this. But see this one suspicious rock? Might crystal. Spear Moblin, can you kill Crow? Probably not, because Crow's so good. Oh, they definitely killed Crow. Nice and easy. Crow is the best echo in the entire game. Because crows are the best, and they like shiny things. But also, you're going to see later, Crow actually is the best. And that is all of this chunk of the Southern Prairie taken care of. If you want to run straight to Gerudo, you're more than welcome to go do that now. But there's some stuff I want to do. And the Great Fairy is an absolutely amazing thing that I really don't think you should pass up. There's also a fun little chest over here in the middle of this island. Spider, can you help me get this chest? And we'll get some rock salt. These clumps of salt crystallized over a long time. You can't use them in their current form. Back at the Southern Prairie, where the spiders were and that piece of heart and actually that side quest that we did, we're just going to go ahead and take Spider Head up the right-hand side and this is going to bring us to Lake Hylia. Over here at Lake Hylia, our first order of business is to make our way to the Middle Island, where this big old scary rift is. And you're going to see an entry point. Let's go ahead and check it out. I, uh, I'm just going to be cutting these entry animations real short from now on because you know what they look like. You already did one. This is the still world, but this area isn't connected to a big riff. Even so, I could sense my friends here. They're not moving at all. I get a feeling they're trapped or something. If we rescue them, we'll be able to mend the rift. I could sense my friends they're in three different areas. Okay. The stilled Lake Hylia. Spear Moblins, can you guys kill the fish that are inside of this thing? Also, anytime that uh, you kill these shadow enemies, they're going to be dropping energy for your sword fighter form, which is helpful. And this is what Tri's friends look like. It's a big pulsating ball. That's one of three down. Let's head to the top and to the right through this water platforming. You know who's great at killing spear bow goblins? Crows. Using some beds to platform up and to the right. 
Down here, you're gonna be seeing a big old rock in the water. Let's go ahead and grab that with Try. And Try's friends are behind it. Let's make our way back to the left, back to this large bit of water over here. Continuing making our way to the left. Over here is a water tunnel. Did not even realize that. Neat. Cool. And that's a GG. As soon as you interact with your last orb, you're immediately taken out, so you don't need to worry about defeating monsters or recovering air or anything else. Hey, it's Tri's friends. Not nearly as much as we're in the dungeon. I guess that, you know, makes sense, because dungeon's more bigger. My friends shared some of their power with me. These little rifts are gonna be giving Tri portions of his little energy meter being full. We also get two mite crystals from Tri. Thank you very much. And now that we helped out this rift, let's go ahead and make our way up and to the right just a little bit. You're going to be seeing a warp point and a big old cave here with some fairies printed on it. Guess what's in there? I'll give you a hint. It rhymes with schmerries. Let's also refill our fairy bottle. Oh, it was already full. Cool. Blue, 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 blue. Yeah, definitely a fan of the more like harpsichordy gray fairy theme, but okay. You're the one who woke me up, dear? I sure was. Let's have a look. I don't know who you are or what you're from, but you are a diamond in the rough. And with a little bit of polish, you could be a diamond with the stuff. But what approach to take? Hmm, I've got it. What if we increase the number of accessories you can wear? Yes, that must be bold daring. Are you ready to begin your adventure of style? Make me more stylish. Teehee, how can I refuse your most heartfelt wish to be more stylish? But I won't insult you by doing it for free, of course. The trouble with a free service is you're always waiting for the bill, hmm? I don't believe in waiting, so I always collect my fees in advance. Of course, I'll need a hundred rupees, that's okay. How I adore rupees. Ahem, as promised, I will enhance your style. Your accessory limit has been raised by one. You can now wear even more accessories than before. Go out in the world and show off your accessory success. Now, you can make yourself more stylish for additional rupees. The next one is 300, and then I believe 500, and then I believe 1,000. So once you have 300 rupees, first thing you should do is come back here, talk to the Great Fairy, and expand your stylish accessory limit. Uh, by the way, should have probably talked about this before. That heart pin that you got, you should go ahead and equip that. I'm playing in hero mode, so uh, that doesn't help me at all, so I'm going to keep that slot open. But there's going to be a lot of accessories we're going to be coming across. Uh, by the way, there is only one Great Fairy Shrine, and this is the one that you have to return to in order to upgrade your stuff. I did not know that on my blind playthrough, and I was looking for more fairies. But I just never thought about coming back in here to check this out. Back here at Lake Hylia, we are going to be going to the lower right hand area and getting ourselves some echoes right quick, including this tech tight crows. If you could focus on this one guy trying to kill me, that'd be so helpful. Come on, crows. Yay, two crows. Just Rick and his two crows. You learned the tech tight echo and uh, they're probably going to be better at taking out another tech tight than crows are. Now, there's also a fish over here. Yep, red fish. Okay, guys, guys, focus, focus. That's fine, we can just spawn more in. Great, we killed the fish. And another tech type. I'm gonna go ahead and learn the fish. The tangler. Oh, good job, guys. I didn't think you could do it. I mean, I knew you could do it. Let's make our way to the lower right-hand side over here. And here, we're going to be getting our first stamp of the game. See this old platform over here? That's a stamp platform. Hey! The guy's going to come parachuting in. Seems like a very poor parachute to body ratio, but okay. Hello, I'm the stamp guy. I love stamps since I was a tiny tot. Now I'm Hyrule's biggest stamp fan. I'm just gonna fast forward through all this text. Um, in Japan, it's a really big thing that you go to, you have a stamp card and you get it stamped at different places. So that's what this is based off of. And there's just 25 stamps in the entire game and you have to go around and gather them all. And then you get rewards from him. The best reward is after 15 stamps, you get a fairy bottle. So, yeah, we're going to be getting all 25 of those throughout our journey. Here at Lake Hylia, <clears throat> here at Lake Hylia, we have one last thing to go do, which is get this one last location, which is 
just some very not obvious water. By the way, I'm from New Jersey, so if you hear me say water the way I do and it and it and it irks you, deal with it. <laughs> Anyways, make it our way down to that one not suspicious place. You're gonna see a big old suspicious rock. Go ahead, lift that up. And underneath there is a mite crystal. Great. Okay, our next objective, we're gonna be making our way to Hyrule Field, in particularly right about there, which is gonna be our next fast travel location. By the way, there's these very crude drawings of the princess. Uh, wanted Princess Zelda, if sighted, send word to the King of Hyrule. Woo, this field is so big. At least we finished putting up wanted posters in the West. Nobody's seen Princess Zelda yet. First we were ordered to save her, and now we're ordered to capture her. It really doesn't sit right with me to be treating her like some sort of villain. I mean, it's weird to me too, but orders are orders and all. Yeah, you know what? That's the, You aren't the only person to blindly follow orders. What about the third right? Right next to where these soldiers are is here going to be a chest. Let's go ahead and grab that out of the ground. Oh, I did not expect that dude to come out of nowhere and then murk me and then use my fairy immediately. Crows, go ahead and kill the big crow. So this big crow, he, uh, he doesn't attack nearly as fast or as vigorous as the regular crows. He also doesn't make enemies drop rupees, and he costs more. Now, there's some situations where having lots of small crows is better, and there's some situations that using the Gawai is better. There's times that you want one, and there's times you want the other. I'm gonna take a quick nappy poo. My marker was just a little bit off of where we need to go, and I found it. Great. Here is the location of the fast travel point that we need, and this is going to be Hyrule Field. In this small map segment, we can get something right about here and something right about here. This is when that 100% walkthrough really comes in handy, guys. Out of all these trees, all the way on the left, you have that one tiny little suspicious weed. That's what we want. Come on over here, spin at it, and Mike Crystal. From here, we're just gonna head south back to that other marker that I showed you. Wolf. Wolf is a great early game echo. Go away. Go get the wolf. Oh, Deku Baba on a tree. Oh, he can reach him on a tree. Man, wolf is strong. Yay, we finally killed him. We learned the wolfos. But over here, one suspicious rock, and that's a mite crystal. And that's a smooth segue into our next small bit of map that we just uncovered. Directly in the middle of all these trees, you see that one little upright thing? That's where we're gonna be going. There's also gonna be a pea hat in the middle of here and a heart piece. So let's go ahead, who's good at taking down a pea hat? Oh yeah, good job, crow. And on this stump is our next piece of heart. And since we're so close to the ranch, we might as well go ahead and unlock the ranch as well. Once you start seeing these large hay bales, you know that you're next to the ranch. Unlock the fast travel point and collect our stamp. Stamp rally, go! With this little bit of the map unlocked, I wanna go ahead to this one suspicious stump over here. <laughs> so one suspicious plant on a raised platform. That's a mite crystal. Like I said, if you wanna go get a rental horse now, you're more than welcome to. I think it's so unnecessary until actually a good mount later in the game. And next we're gonna make our way east to, get this, East Hyrule Field. East Hyrule Field has one of the two early optional dungeons, and that's actually what we wanna do in this episode. And let me tell you, it is the most fun dungeon in this entire game. You're gonna thank me for this. Anyways, right here at this bottom left part of this uh, continent, peninsula, landmass, is going to be a suspicious rock. Go ahead and move that for a mite crystal. And while we're here, we're also going to be making our way to right about there. Making our way over to this tree over here, you're going to see it's guarded by a crow doing his best job. But Crow found a shiny. Thank you, Crow. I'm going to take your shiny. Now directly north of us is going to be our next fast travel warp location that we can go ahead and unlock right over here. And while we're here, there's going to be something for us to gather on top of this small landmass. There's going to be a stamp for us to get right about here. And then we're going to be making our way for something to get right about there. That first marker is going to be this one suspicious rock while of the... <sighs> that first marker is going to be this one suspicious rock surrounded by all of these you know, non-movable rocks. That second marker is going to be a stamp for the stamp rally. Thank you. 
And there's a bunch of enemies up there. Oh, that's the sword fighter moblin. I don't believe we got him yet. Oh, you know who's good at taking these out? Wolf. Yeah, flawless victory. The sword moblin echo. Making our way just to the right, that one marker that I showed you before is going to be that one suspicious rock up there. Mike Crystal. And now I think it's about time that we go inside and make our way inside of this small optional dungeon temple. Before we do that, now that we have enough Mike Crystals, I'm going to head back to Blueberries and upgrade my sword fighter form. I don't know how much more damage my sword does, but in our next area, we actually don't need that much sword power. I'm going to go with energy. Energy gauge is now level three. Now let's make our way back to this warp marker and back to this optional temple that we saw over here, which I believe is also a side quest. Ah, yeah, here he is. Hey guy, bah, you scared me. My name's Sago, I'm an archeologist. Is there a particular reason you're here? Uh, nope, not, not in particular reason at all, except Austin John Play said that we should go here. Oh, there's a voice that says, let's play a game, shall we? Oh yeah, that's exactly what it sounded like. It might sound friendly, but that's the voice of a monster. I'm not studying the temple while there are monsters about. Let's play a game. So in here, we're actually going to be battling Jigsaw. <laughs> in our first room, we're going to be seeing two Zappy Boys. You know who will work against Zappy Boys? Ignazoles. I mean, they both take damage, but, you know, it's... There we go. That's all we needed. And now we have our first electric-based enemy called the Spark. Okay, so in our room here, you see that thing at the top... Oh, need to make sure I'm not standing against the wall so I don't get zapped. See that thing at the top left? You saw how it just entered there? We have to make it so that these guys enter that block over there. And you can do that one of two different ways. One, which is by grabbing different things in the environment and moving them into specific locations. So that way they start hugging the wall instead of hugging the middle pillars and go ahead and put down a rock. That way they go from the middle pillars back to the outside. Now you see how this guy's already on his way in there. The other way to do it is just spawn them in. <laughs> you could just put your own sparks inside of the machine and then you're done with the puzzle. You play the game how you want to play it, you know what I mean? My first time doing this, I did not come across that idea until way later than I should have. You just spawn in your own ones. And that's all you need to do. <laughs> I think this door was already unlocked. Oh, it was. Perfect. You could also spawn these guys into walls. So this is the first room where you actually have to bring in your own guys. And if we just put that right there, they're going to enter and you're good. Those Octoroks are there so that they uh, they target your sparks. But the whole idea is that if you're just fast about it, you're fine. You may need to actually defeat the Octoroks, which if you're ever in that situation, just spawn an enemy Z target so that they go and pathfind their way over. These sparks are going to respawn. I would like to do this dungeon while taking no damage whatsoever. That's my goal. Whether that's an obtainable goal, I don't know. Also, do sparks damage sparks? <laughs> sparks cannot hurt sparks. I don't know if that makes sense, but it is what it is. You know what can hurt sparks? Sea urchins. They just keep running into it over and over and over. And even though the sea urchin is getting damage and being electrocuted, he uh, is still doing his job. That sea urchin bit going to be very helpful later on. Okay, here we have a 2D area where we need to defeat some sparks. If we stack them up down here at the bottom, oh, that armadillo is definitely taking them out. You know what? I'm going to use my own armadillos. Hopefully they aren't going to be electrocuted. We're going to be here a while. Yay, we took him out. Remember that uh, that following the rolling guy that I showed you before? If you do it with the Carmadillo level 2, it's much faster. And if we're actually fast about this, I don't think we need to defeat these sparks. We could just use the strantula and make our way up. And this is where you learn the dynamics of when electric is in water, electric more strong. But as we know, there is a simple answer to this. Plop down sea urchins and flee down here and get our chest. Nice, another purple ruby. 
That's almost enough for our next accessory slot. So early. Okay, our sea urchin made him pathfind to the ceiling, so I'm okay with that. And here's the boss room already. Very small dungeon. This is a fantastic boss fight. Listen, I would highly recommend you try this boss out without even watching the rest of the video. Just remember that sea urchins are your friend. And if you're having some trouble, continue watching. But great, great boss fight. Like, honestly, my favorite boss fight out of anything in this entire game. So this guy is going to be react is going to be acting the same way that Sparks do. He's going to be following outside perimeters. However, in this size, he's too wide. That way, he can't go through these one wide openings. But all you need to do is plop down some sea urchins on the path that you know that he's going to be walking. Yes, the sea urchins are going to immediately die. Their noble sacrifice is noted. Most importantly, this guy is taking damage. And you can actually spawn four sea urchins at a time, so just go ahead and keep littering his entire path with more and more sea urchins, staying out of the line of fire, the same way that you did to avoid Shadow Link. Something also nice about having so many of your enemies on the screen is that he's not actually going to be targeting you, he's just going to be constantly targeting them. So you're generally safe from damage, as long as you keep, you know, two, three, four of these guys out at all times. Now, is there a more effective way to take him down? Probably, but that's definitely the safest. I suppose you won that round. Forgive me if I get a little broken up. So now, he becomes three tiny clouds. These small clouds, you could walk through them, they do not hurt you. And if you go ahead and if you put down a sea urchin, it becomes stuck on it. The only time that they hurt you is when one of them is disabled and they're actually trying to free it by shooting out little spark balls. All you have to do is change their course of movement and then get them to conjoin with one another. See how those two just became a big one over here? Go ahead, put down a table, and then he forms back to the big boss. And it's the same thing as it was in round one, except he moves faster now. You know what? I'm gonna try to get some, some pop shots off on this guy in my sword fighter form. Ah, damn it. See? I wasn't safe anymore, and now I took damage. It's no longer a zero hit run. Luckily, because of how this guy works, if you're ever low on health, all you have to do is just make your way to a corner that he can't see you at all, and just rest. Go, sea urchin. Sea urchin. Sea urchin. Sea urchin. Sea urchin. Sea urchin. Again, there may be other ways for you to go about defeating this boss, but... This is just the way that worked for me. He's now going to split into five parts, with this one being trapped here at the top right. At the top right, Don't free him until you have to. In the meantime, just focus on conjoining all the pieces, but all of these are gonna be shooting out uh, things to destroy your hazards. We go ahead, put that there. Now he's on this path, and these two are eventually going to be joining up or not, it doesn't matter. They're on the same loop, and I'm okay with that. Let's go ahead and put down tables so that these two guys are going to be on the same loop as well. Fantastic, and they join together. Let's go ahead and join these two guys up by putting down a sea urchin to stop one of the clouds so that the other one d so that the other one goes into it. Nice. And let's go ahead and grab this rock and forcefully pathfind this guy into this corner. And let's go ahead and grab this rock to force this guy. Now that he's going to be going across the perimeter of the room, we just move this rock out of the way, put it right in the middle. Great. You know what? I wonder. I'm pretty sure I could just take this rock, put it right there, and now he's stuck in that tiny little loop, right? Yeah, stuck in that tiny little loop. And he can't destroy the boulders because I didn't spawn those in. Those aren't echoes. Those are real boulders. Can I just make this smaller and smaller until he's eventually stuck in, like, a tiny little purgatory of loop? I'm just having fun now. This is working pretty well. Has to be right in the middle. Ah! Damn. That's what I get. <laughs> it was going well, okay? It was going well. All right, I'll see you back at phase three. Okay, so here's an update on my fun and hysterical way to defeat this boss. 
I am going to trap him in this tiny little corner up here. Because if he's stuck in this corner up here, we know that he can't go through a one wide hole like this one right here. So he's going to be trapped in those four, and then I bring one rock in, and then he can't move at all. And I think that's going to work out great. I did this for 15 minutes. <laughs> I'm not going to edit it because you don't want to watch it. Let's just get on to, to when I did the thing. Oh, he broke the rock. <laughs> okay, well, happy accidents. He's now trapped in a smaller space than I originally planned. I want to go on record and not recommend you try this. This was a dumb and stupid idea that serves absolutely no purpose other than it brings me joy and entertainment. But I'm pretty sure if I just keep spawning in a sea urchin in this one spot, <laughs> Uh, that brought me such great joy. I need more practice. Next we meet, I will emerge the victor. You can count on that. I didn't expect to enjoy this battle this much, but I mean, like, listen, I told you it's going to be a great battle, okay? I told you it's going to be a great battle, and I just made it even more fun for myself. This game lets you explore the game in a completely different way every time they do play and I'm like, I don't know. I had a lot of fun with this fight. I saw something come out of the temple. It looked like a cloud. It sure did. You're telling me the cloud is a monster and you defeated it? Incredible, I'm gonna write all about it in my next paper. I thought you were an archeologist. That was a monster. Oh, by the way, best accessory in the game we just got. Totally forgot about that fun little detail. The Ancient Charm. It uh, increases your defense. Fantastic accessory, 10 out of 10 recommend. So throughout our journey, we have a total of seven pieces of heart, 17 might crystals, three stamps that you could see all the ones that we gathered already on the map. We already have two accessories, one of the best ones in the game, damage reduction. And I think that's a fantastic place to wrap up this episode of Echoes of Wisdom 100% walkthrough with me, Austin Sean. Thank you so much for being here. If the next episode is out already, it's gonna be on screen. Thank you so much for being here. Until next time, Austin John out.